So, Liz, I uh, I got something to tell you, baby. Mm, what's up? I got my first. Uh, I bagged my first one today. <laughs> Your first what? First Corona kill. No, what's a Corona kill? Well, so you know the COVID nineteen virus, what it does to the human body, right? Mm. It 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 sort of it mimics sort of the zombification effects that scientists have been warning about for for decades now. Uh, and transforms people into super smart, super fast, superhuman uh, monsters. No, this is not true. It's absolutely true. So I was I was patrolling today, and, and actually, ironically patrolling. enough, Corona Heights. patrolling. I've been on Corona Patrol. Oh my god! Me and all the boys, we got these t- uh, Tyvek painter suits. We got the gloves. We got the mask. But you stand six there. feet apart from each other, right? Yeah, but that's because it's other dudes, not because of the Corona. Mm. Uh, and, and we had, we had this, like this deranged looking, uh, man come up to us and be like, why are you wearing that shit? Why do you have a gun? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, this guy has Corona virus and, uh, and you know, emptied a mag, uh, smoked him is what they say. And, uh, continued on our way. I didn't get any of his, I mean, it was clear. Like usually I don't think any of this happened. No, no, no. You're right. I did take a nice long walk in Buena Vista though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Did you see some lovely flowers? Uh, today, not no, not really. There's not. A, it's not a big. It's a cruising park more than a flower park. Ugh, that's like Hobo Cruise Park. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. It's where you will go if you want to get your dick sucked. <laughs> Uh, how you been doing? Um, I'm good. I don't know. Same, same. You know, in my compound. What do you call uh-huh. it? The True Non Ultra Bunker? The True Non Ultra Bunker, mm. yeah. For those of you, I'm actually, uh, I can see Liz right now, even though she's recording from the bunker. Mm. And I got to say, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> the, the steel walls look amazing, <laughs> but but... The way you've painted them, it's just, it's fantastic. I never knew you were such a talented muralist. Yes. I, you know, I've always appreciated good sponge painting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Um, so I've, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm about ready for this thing to be over. Yeah. I'm not like freaked out or anything anymore. I'm just like, I'm bored. I know. I think everyone kind of is. Yeah. I was saying we were doing the Twitch stream uh last night mm-hmm. and i was saying that and, and i was telling you and young chomsky that i had like basically what was pretty much an anxiety attack yesterday yes. although it didn't fully manifest i was able to kind of like calm myself down before the hyperventilate whatever hyperventilating started mm-hmm. and uh because i had just like convinced myself that i had it yeah and i and i'm like I have realized that I have to keep myself busy around the house with things other than being on the computer, whether it's like cleaning, cooking, organizing, like finding, reorganizing things or like, I don't know, taking care of my plants or whatever. Yeah. Or else my brain will just start thinking about like, why does my chest feel tight? And then my chest will feel tighter and then my lungs will hurt. And then like, yes, yes, I'll start yes. manifesting all these symptoms totally in my brain. So I'm trying to not do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I would like to recommend something to you, a product. I know you've, you've been telling me to use this, this Dr. Singa's mustard bath, mm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have been doing it multiple times a day. <laughs> oh, no, uh, no, you haven't been, though, right? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. No, I ordered it and it never came. Um, <laughs> well, but, anyone listening who did order it, don't do it multiple times a day. Do it, like, once or twice a week if you do it. Uh, but uh, I think something that, that would really work for you that, that I've been doing a lot lately is uh, adrenochrome. <laughs> Where did you get your hands on it, Brace? Well, so I have my own supply. Oh, uh, boy. As you know, I have a sizable attic. In fact, I live in an attic, but my <laughs> attic has like a little loft chamber above it. 
And uh, let's just say I keep a I keep a supply. Oh God! Yeah, uh, but you're welcome to come to as- ascend from the depths of the bunker, the ultra bunker, anytime you'd like, <laughs> and 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 hop, skip, and jump your way over here across uh, across the mountains and the sea to uh, to take a sip. <laughs> well, wait. Speaking of, you mm-hmm. know why you brought that up? Oh wait, what? I did it wrong. Should we introduce ourselves? Uh, I'd prefer not to. At this point, <laughs> with the with the whole COVID stuff going on, I don't know. You know, a lot of people know me. I'm a pretty, you know, well known guy. I unlike either you guys. I actually I have a Wikipedia article, um, which is like I, it's Ooh cool. Ooh la I have, la, Mr. I, Fancy Internet dot I mean, com just, over here. That's no, that is my cousin Kim. <laughs> uh, the, the Korean side of my family, Kim dot com. Um, <laughs> A lot of people don't don't know that like okay yeah I'm I'm famous and with that comes like a lot of crazy you know it's 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 difficult for me. Yes, I have my full address on my Wikipedia article. <laughs> no, that isn't normal. Yes, that so uh, well wishers can come by and throw pennies in the large fountain in my uh, in my villa's courtyard. <laughs> um, but it's you know times like this. Fine, I'll do it. My name is Brace Belden. That's right. I'm Liz. We are joined by a producer, Young Chomsky, and this is Truanon. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hello. And we have we have a exciting episode. But before I think we should mention uh that we are doing these Twitch streams now. Yeah, yeah. I just mentioned we did that last night, but I think we're gonna start doing it regularly. Uh we don't have a f- like exact set date always for the weekday ones. Mm. We will we will announce them, but we're trying to figure out our schedule. We're gonna try to do about two a week with some other ones also, but definitely at least two shows a week. Uh and one, I believe, unless this changes, uh, we're going to try to do Sunday nights at 5. Mm. And then uh, either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I, can't, I don't know yet, uh, also at, at 5, probably, 5 or 6. 5, let's say. Uh, and it's, tr- I don't know what the exact web address is, but it's the It's twitch.tv slash truanon. Uh-huh. They make and, it uh, easy for you. I'll be honest with you. We are not, uh, we're not so hot at tech. No, because we're not say. fucking dorks. Exactly. So it's like, yes, okay, sometimes we don't know what, you know, sometimes it does take uh, 15 <laughs> uh, consecutive hours of us trying to set up whatever OBS is before we do it. But we're getting there. and we'll, we'll get it. And please stop. You know what I say to that? I say, you know, Chad meme, computer go burr. I don't yeah. know. Computer goes burr. <laughs> Uh, and you'll be going burr, too, when you make fun of me again, and I take <laughs> off all your clothes and leave you in a blizzard um, after sucking you off. Okay, you okay, okay. So, so you brought up adrenochrome, mm-hmm. and I think you did with good reason. Adrenochrome motherfuckers. we are talking Q corona craziness today. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, we are. No, we have, we have official... Uh, well, first of all, there's been a lot going on in Q world with this whole COVID <laughs> crisis. Um, <laughs> but totally uh, quo- yeah, COVID crisis. Quo- it's cool because it's kind of like baby talk, which you know I, I know, know people I- find that sexy. COVID crisis <laughs> uh, with uh, figured out by Andrew Cuomo. I was gonna say that. Mm, I beat you to it, baby. <laughs> I didn't and think it I made get all sense. the credit. Um. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we have invited as a returning guest, uh, Q. Uh, excuse me. Let me let me get this straight in my head. True anon, Q anon, correspondent, <laughs> Travis View from the Q anon anonymous podcast. Did I get that right? You did. Round of applause. Congratulations. Look at that. Uh, we will be discussing. Uh, these sick freaks in Hollywood, mm. uh, and how the Q sphere has been reacting to the crisis. That is, I'm sorry, I shouldn't repeat that again. How are there still sirens? We're not even recording. <laughs> we're not even recording from Young Chopsky's apartment right now. How are there still sirens? You live in a quiet area. I don't know, man. There's... Actually, I don't know who's. That could have no, been either of you me. guys. It wasn't me. Oh, was that from Young Chopsky's uh, uh, basement There's apartment? Still stuff on fire, I guess. <laughs> Pathetic, dude. I would never set something on fire during this time of crisis. Uh, all right, all guys, right, all right, all right. Should we get the yeah. show on the road? Let's, uh, let's, uh, 
Let's fire up the engine, baby. This is our interview with Travis View. Welcome to our main event. We have with us in the cyber studio, Travis View, co-host of the QAnon Anonymous, to uh, answer some questions about our uh, our friends over in the in the QAnon community. Travis, how you doing? I'm doing wonderfully. Thank you so much for uh, for having me. Uh, let me ask you this before we get started: Have they fully doxed you yet? <laughs> yeah, they they doxed me. They they, they did successfully. Uh, I, I I knew it would happen eventually, but yeah. But then they found out uh, my my real name where I really work down. In, uh, it was just a tech company down in San Diego. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, but they haven't been able to. They're very. I feel like they're they're kind of disappointed because they thought I would be uh, I guess more powerful mm-hmm. or I would have uh, have a uh, uh, you know some some something sort of shady in my past instead of just being sort of just a dude who you know works a low level job at a, a company and has a family and a pretty lame IRL so they are very disappointed about that. I will say respect on the family. Yeah. Um well it has been I mean as a fellow podcaster you can understand how eventful these uh these days since the the pandemic has really hit has been. Yeah. It's a it's a peak podcasting time, certainly. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and I mean, for those of you who are not familiar, we've had Travis on the show before, um, and Travis has his own podcast dedicated to, uh, well, exploring the QAnon com- the community, uh, and also just sort of broader uh, right wing crankery. But um, this ha- you must be you must be overjoyed. I mean, you must be like a damn pig and shit. I mean, this stuff. I mean, I want to put it like that because yeah, everything is very awful and very sad for uh, yes. uh, the things, things, the way things are going. But uh, but uh, the um, yeah, it is certainly the way that the QAnon community is reacting because the QAnon, uh, the QAnon community is basically an apocalyptic cult, and yeah. now we have essentially an apocalyptic event happening, and so they're they're very excited about what everything is happening. So it is uh, if things are lining up quite nicely for them, they feel. Yeah, I think like what's been fascinating is watching how the Q people have fit the phenomenon of the virus into their already existing kind of universe where they're like, this isn't the great storm that, and we can talk about what that is in case our listeners aren't familiar. Um, Although I think some of them are, Uh, but that it's like kind of a prelude or you know, it's 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 playing out the way they and they were told by Q. Yeah, I mean, like lo- a lot of the things. The the funny thing is that like nothing in the Q lore ever predicted the pandemic. You know, oh, in yeah. fact, in mm-hmm. fact, in fact, in fact, uh, in fact, they were uh, dismissing uh, the pandemic in in uh, like late January because uh because you know they they thought that they thought that they're taking cues from Trump essentially mm-hmm. uh, but but once it became serious they started telling themselves that oh wait this is a prelude to the storm of mass arrests and the great awakening that they wanted because uh, number one it got everyone indoors that meant that they're gonna spend more time online that means that mm. they're gonna get red pilled and they mm. thought <laughs> and they thought that uh, that's another- been my experience. Well. Yeah, yeah, me, me, me too. Unfortunately, <laughs> so um, another element is that they thought that that they're really they're really craving basically martial law. They really they really at the very first Q drop talked about the National Guard being activated, and now of course you know the National Guard is uh, a little bit more active now in the in this in the state of emergency, and so they think that eventually it's going to come to a place where basically uh, there there is martial law that they've been uh, waiting for for years. Mm. So. Th- so, so it is. It's not. It's, they didn't predict what was going to happen, but it sort of fits the themes that they that they thought was going to happen. So they're very happy. Yeah. So I mean, could you give a little like? I mean, I I assume that like a good percentage of our listeners are familiar with at least the bare bones of the Q Q sort of story and lore. Although we last interviewed you kind of a while. It was a very early mm-hmm. episode, so it's been a little while since then. Uh, just real quick, how has like 
I, I, I know that with every sort of new event that happens, with every twist and turn of the Trump presidency, uh, most importantly, but also world events, the Q sort of universe has folded all of those into its own sort of uh, mythos, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically sort of a uh, sort of a crowdsource improvisational exercise. When 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 <laughs> when anything happens whatsoever, they fold it into their into their mythology. They fit everything, even like Trump typos. If Trump makes a typo, they think that it was intentional, some mm. sort of secret code, and they 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 sort of fold that into their their uh, their very yes and basically. That's that's <laughs> how they make sense of the world. I knew UCB was problematic. We should yeah, have shut yeah. them down early. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I know. They, they, I, I, I know, and I really respect that they're very much into numerology in terms of like letters that Trump uses in tweets, and certainly the numbers that he he puts out when he tweets stuff. Um, but you were saying that like they were pretty unprepared for this, right? Like, has the Q? Because I know that Q basically makes. I mean, he ha- he has like prophecies, and then they kind of tie. Uh, you know, nothing will happen for eight months, and then they'll find something, some way to tie that prophecy into like something that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though I mean, they they rationalize away everything. Like for example, a um, a, a an early early Q drop said trust she- sessions, trust Jeff sessions. He mm-hmm. he's 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 the guy who's going to bring about the storm. But on the other hand, Trump hated sessions. Yes. He bashed them on Twitter. He he said it was a, he doesn't he said I don't even have an attorney general. It's quite obvious that Trump is, is unhappy with sessions, and, and so QAnon people told them, oh. You are watching a movie. This is all for show. This is uh, secretly Sessions is somehow bringing about the mass arrest, even though he didn't. Win. So it's like it's it's totally unfalsifiable. But yeah, they they just they just take every sort of weird twist in the news and say this somehow fits into our mythology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this, I assume, caught them sort of off guard at first. But in a way, it's like perfect for them because I mean. Well, could you explain first a little about Q's, QAnon universes uh, or, or the Bakers and the sort of investigators' um, views on Hollywood? Well, yeah, uh, Hollywood. They they certainly believe that Hollywood is composed of of uh, uh, pedophilic uh, adrenochrome drinkers. Correct. Um, um, and so and so, uh, just just all of them. If you've ever achieved any degree of success. In Hollywood, that means that basically you are been initiated into this Illuminati uh, the cabal, and uh, that involves uh, a lot of uh, sacrificing children and drinking their adrenalized blood. In their mm. view, um, and so and so, uh, a, a popular target of uh, of these these accusations is uh, is uh, Tom Hanks. Who- yeah, there's like. Um- <laughs> I've read lots of threads, and as uh-huh. I'm sure you have as well, <laughs> of course, uh, about Tom Hanks and all his very strange social media posts, especially the one with Oprah. Um, but yeah, that that he kind of like his like social like so much of this stuff with celebrities is based on the way they use social media, and Tom Hanks has this very like. Kind, I mean, sort of like classically boomerish, like playful, but not that funny, like way of doing Instagram and Twitter posts. And so they like, they'll, they'll use that as like, like you're saying, a way to find these kind of like supposed ciphers or that he's like transmitting messages. Yes, yes, yes. They often say, um, uh, one thing that they say in QAnon is symbolism will be their downfall, which is this belief that like Hollywood or the Cabal have their own sort of secret way of speaking through symbols and codes. And then once we sort of decode it, we can sort of like understand what's really going on. And you're right. Uh, Tom Hanks, he has, he has a, he uses uh, uh, social media in a really weird way. He'll take, do for example, he will, uh, he'll take a photograph of a sock on the side of the road. Uh huh. And 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 then post that for some reason, just because it caught his eye, a glove, just something discarded. Yeah, I saw the one with the glove. It was very weird, and it was like Route sixty six. Hope it's not roadkill, and it was like a medical glove. And then like someone died like two days later, and that's like kind oh, of. Oh, I think Cappy. 
I think yeah, it was yeah, Cappy. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that, a lot of QAnon people thought that that was a reference to Isaac Cappy, who, who was a QAnon promoter who tragically committed suicide by jumping off of a bridge. Um, and um, they think that this was Tom Hanks actually signaling that he was somehow involved in Isaac Cappy's death, which is, was, there's no evidence whatsoever of that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the ways that they sort of decoded these sort of these, uh, these social media posts from Tom Hanks. Wait, can we, can we, yeah, actually, I, I don't want to get into Cappy right now, but I do want to get into Cappy for a little bit because he's sort of the, uh, you know, dark to light. He's the light uh, in yeah. Hollywood. Um, but yeah, Tom Hanks is like, what, what, what exactly like, what is sort of the mythology around Hanks? Okay, well, they actually, a popular accusation, there's this one QAnon promoter, her name is uh, Sarah Ruth Ashcraft. Yes. And she claims, again, baseless, no real evidence for this whatsoever, but she claims that she was sold to Tom Hanks at 14 years old as a, as a sex slave by her CIA father. This is what they this is what they claim that that uh, that uh, Tom Hanks procured this this teenage sex slave, and that's one of the many uh -huh. evil things that Hanks allegedly did. Um, and that's where it kind of stems from. Like it's so it's, so for Ashcroft is like sort of like the genesis of a lot of these accusations because she she provides like a first hand one, quote yes, unquote first hand. Yes. Yes, yes, she has. Yeah, she has an elaborate story about like about how she was basically uh, 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 sexually abused by 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 Tom Hanks and the, like this this we she yeah she has lots of like tweets and stuff about this. Um, yeah, obviously there's there's nothing to substantiate whatsoever, but uh, but a lot of QAnon people they're just latched onto this idea and they 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 uh, Sarah Ruth Ashcraft she's managed to build quite a large uh, audience from these baseless allegations. Yeah, I know. I've 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 been I've been following her for a little while. Clearly, insane. Although, oh. you know, it's yeah, yeah. There there are lots of people in the QAnon community. I think that are like grifters, where they cynically manipulating people who like conspiracy theories. Yes, she, uh, Ash Athcraft, Ashcraft. I think she is. She actually uh, actually has some issues. I think she needs some serious uh, pharmacological help, probably. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, well, which I'm happy to provide for her uh, for a small fee, um, <laughs> and then consistently larger ones as time goes on. So one of the ways the the our little problematic friends at Q have latched on to Tom Hanks with uh, the pandemic is that he, of course, famously came out in a video tweet or whatever, and he and his wife had coronavirus. Yes. Yes. And so the Q people, just to explain it to our listeners, have kind of latched onto this idea that all of these celebrities coming out and saying that they have coronavirus is a kind of like cover up for mass arrests of global pedophilia that's happening currently. Yeah. That is that is one element. The other element I really love this is that they a lot of QAnon followers have ta have latched onto the tainted adrenochrome theory. Mm. Whoa, okay, yeah, so, I like this theory. Hold yeah, on, th hold on. Could you explain real quick to to some of our listeners what adrenochrome is? Okay, so uh, uh, adrenochrome is a uh, is a is a real 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 compound that um, has some. Uh, medical uses in some limited circumstances. Um, but, um, but a lot of QAnon people, they believe uh, f falsely that it has a lot of special sort of uh, um, uh, hallucinogenic properties. And they think that it's a sort of a substance that uh, the elites use to make themselves young. Basically what they believe is that the elites torture and kill young children to adrenalize their blood. And then they, they extract this blood and then they take it to get high and stay young forever. This is sort of the sort of the mythology. Now, that's not true. They got this idea from uh, um, from Hunter S. Hunter S. Thompson, who talked about entering the chrome as if it as if it had had these properties. It just doesn't. Um, but they have this misconception about what adrenochrome chrome is and then how it's used. But but, but basically in QAnon world, it's the sort of the the evil secret drug of the elites. And like everyone, everyone with a high degree of fame or power takes it to uh, to you know basically renew their evil powers. Mm. Uh, um, and wait, um, but can you still like take it? Mm-hmm. 
Like, Dude, could I get Adrenochrome? You could buy, listen, you could buy, uh, right now, you could go online, you could buy some Adrenochrome for 60 bucks. It's synthesized. It's, it's not difficult to acquire. Um, but the is, synthesized version isn't supposed to be the one that they use. Yes, this is this is what the, I've, the I've been told. I've been told is that they want pure organic adrenochrome, mm, not this, not which this requires lab children's stuff. bodies. Yes, exactly. Well, Liz, you know, I got source. my my buddy, my buddy Hamilton, the chemist guy. We could, I'm gonna. <laughs> I just texted him to see if he could get us some. So, well, but synthetic isn't gonna do anything. For us. I I didn't it's say synthetic. So but. the <laughs> idea that Q, what Q's saying, what you mentioned the. Uh, contaminated adrenochrome factories is that's the other thing is that they think that the a lot of these factories producing adrenochrome are in wuhan isn't that correct that is correct yes yes they think that yes all this adrenochrome is coming out of wuhan which of course ground zero for the pandemic exactly and so now did did they believe that before the pandemic or was is that no new belief. This is okay. something they just they just decided to <laughs> love after it. But fact. it's all adding up. Yes. <laughs> so, no, but that's so that's the other thing that I love uh, about this angle is you know that the, they're obsessing all over these um, celebrity Instagram posts and they're like, shit, Ellen looks like shit. It's because she doesn't have her adrenochrome because the facilities have been contaminated by the pandemic, and it's like. No, Ellen's old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, oh, yeah. you guys, the magic of movie making. Like, and, Photoshop yeah. everyone. <laughs> and she's also mean, and being mean ages you. That's very true. She's like, she's like Amy Klobuchar, level bad boss lady. So, so they they think that not only have have the the celebs unfortunately lost their supply of adrenochrome. Why they wouldn't keep a supply of adrenochrome around? You know, I, if I was Tom Hanks, for instance, and I was I needed adrenochrome in order to keep acting and yeah. just, you know, being young, I would have like a year stock. Yeah, you'd just, think they'd stock up. Well, one one other component of the theory is that is that they believe that they were getting their uh, adrenochrome from across the southern border, from mm. Mexico. But, of course, Trump, in his wisdom, has, 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 re- has uh, closed off the border, so they can't get adrenochrome from there anymore. So they have to get it from mm. other sources, like this, this factory in Wuhan that they just made up. Now, does that tie into MS-13 stuff? Yeah. Uh, yes. The, yes. Yeah, they also, <laughs> yes. Uh, they also believe that uh, MS-13 uh, was a basically a private hit squad for uh, the Democratic yes. Party. Oh and, wow! And it was it was MS-13 who was responsible for uh, killing Seth Rich. And uh, oh. this is, there's no evidence of this whatsoever. It's an unsolved unsolved murder. But um, but this is this is what they believe that basically the Democratic Party enlisted the help of MS-13 to kill Seth Rich to basically get back at him for for uh, uh, they they think leaking uh, the DNC emails. Mm. I'm not going to comment anything on the Seth Rich thing, but I will like they 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 are too reductive about these things. Like I think it's very easy to kind of plot out a history where cartels are linked through the CIA to MS-13 and there's like a little triangle there. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, this like, yeah, really extremely reductive like folklore is, is actually like obscuring more than clarifying. I mean, I know it's not meant to clarify, but, but like, it's like, yeah, exactly. Like they're there. I mean, their idea of it is that literally like Nancy Pelosi and Maxine waters, then mode <laughs> some guy in El Salvador, $800,000 of taxpayer money in order to shoot, uh, not only Seth rich, but to push Michael Tracy to basically to, <laughs> to make do Spanish outreach for Bernie um, <laughs> it's like that's it's all like it's not a, it's it's it can't just be like this sort of like yeah no I mean I don't need to explain any further but you know what I mean um, but uh, it's yeah it's it's very bizarre and it's it's this plays into their whole like the Q, the Q sort of theory of the world is that like there is a giant global battle ongoing but it's behind the scenes. That's right. Somehow every major player in every major country and even minor ones are involved in it. 
but no one really else besides them. Um, and they, if people found out about it, that's the thing. So the reason, the reason that all these arrests happen in secret is because if the public found out that not only was there a cabal, but the cabal uh, injected the blood of children, uh, ate babies, uh, uh, purposely chose fight song to <laughs> activate MK Ultra this and Liz, is my fight um, song. that that would be such overwhelming, like uh, you know, shock to the system that people would just basically keel over of heart attacks. Yeah, yeah. I think that there, there's one Q post that goes like, um, like it, the truth would put 90% of people in the hospital. There's mm. this idea mm. that the truth is so horrifying. No, that's Corona, that, baby. Yeah, right. <laughs> that if it were to be a release at once, then we just couldn't psychologically handle it. Really, all this is, I think, is 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 a way for QAnon people to flatter themselves. And this idea, mm. like, they're, they're very uh, uh, stoic and tough, and they can handle the dark truth about the horrible reality we live in but the people on the street the normies that they're looking after they just can't handle it so that's why they think that all of these uh, uh arrests that they're happening has to happen over a slow timeline rather than just releasing all at once i always said you know i feel feel like feel like if trump was saving children saving lots and lots of children he feels like this is something that he would be openly boastful about rather yes. than like doing it doing it in secret yeah, that doesn't totally add up for me. <laughs> this is where the whole should we mention the Oprah fiasco? Oh yes, we should. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, no, go ahead, Liz. This is this is this is your wheelhouse, baby. No, I just you know Oprah was like uh, Oprah arrested. I think was trending uh, last week. Yeah, and yes, number one on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah, Amazing, incredible, um, and. And so she, there was a big rumor going around that she was one of the celebs that was secretly arrested or placed on house arrest, which is always like, that's what they'll claim if they post a photo, but you can't see their ankle because they'll be like, oh, can't see the ankle monitor. They must be on house arrest. Yep. Um, and so this is like a massive world trending topic like you mentioned and oprah herself had to come out and be like uh i wasn't arrested for these horrible things you were saying i'm just at home yeah yeah this is so so bizarre yeah there was basically it started with um this this Twitter thread, and then it turned into uh, a YouTube video of someone who claimed that Oprah has been arrested. Yes. Her ho her home is being excavated. Basically, there was like uh, there was like tape around her home in <laughs> Florida, and that meant that she was being being arrested. And then it spilled out basically into normie Twitter, who basically who are uh, lots of lots of people who use Twitter day to day are just unfamiliar with these wild conspiracy theories and they just read oh uh, Oprah has been arrested that sounds plausible and just yeah. untold numbers of people online just bought into it and made it the number one trending topic just a bizarre fantasy so why is Oprah like tied up in all of this uh, well Oprah is tied up in all of this for uh, a couple reasons number one um, uh, uh, I feel like I feel like the QAnon people they want to go after like the biggest celebrities mm. that they can I feel like yeah. this is why they target Tom Hanks and so any permanent a plus lister they 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 definitely have a lot of interest in to prove that they are secretly evil and people shouldn't like them um and another reason is uh, basically oprah's re relationship with harvey weinstein they mm. they do a lot of pictures um uh, real real actual pictures of oprah with harvey weinstein and they say that oh he uh she knew or she was in on what he was doing and that mm. proves that she was part of the cabal doing some sex trafficking stuff this is what they say. Yeah, she also um, has featured prominently on her show and in her different kind of like media endeavors. Uh, what I would call a cult in South America called John of God. Yes, yes. And yes, this that, is like kind of a big focus for cute people, I think. Yeah, there's there's uh, yeah there's the John of God uh, cult. There's also uh, there's a school in Africa that mm. was um, somehow tied to uh, Oprah's uh, charity efforts that was associated with um, some sex trafficking, and they they tie it to that as well. I and, will say uh, that 
like something that's a little frustrating is now I noticed it's very difficult to Google Oprah, John of God stuff because this big like hoax went trending and so you can't find any of the old articles because now all the new stories about the hoax are like on the pages and pages of Google. But so Oprah is not the only, so we've mentioned Oprah, Tom Hanks. I mean, I love talking about the celebs, so hopefully this isn't too much, but I do, we have to mention Ellen and yes. the kind of like bizarre communication that cute people think is happening between different social media accounts. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because of the uh, the uh, pandemic, a lot of uh, celebs are are in their homes and they trying to get their attention fixed by posting on social media. I suppose as all of us are, but um, but uh, but uh, yeah, they're they're doing weird things. Like for example, Ellen uh, Ellen DeGeneres she posted a video of her herself basically uh, flubbing a magic trick with a deck of cards. It was supposed to be sort of a little joke. It's very and weird. It was it was it was kind of weird. It was, I, was, I guess it was, I guess it was supposed to be a joke. But during that video, during that trick, she showed the camera a um, a, uh, a a a six card, a, another six card, and a five. Mm -hmm. And what do you get when you add six, six, and five? Seventeen. And seventeen is is uh, uh, the Q is the seventeenth letter of the alphabet. No. So this is. And so cute people thought that this was Ellen signaling that she had been arrested or that or she was ah. s sending a warning to the other people in the cabal or something. Oh, my God. So they I attached a lot this. of significance to that. Yeah. So so their, their idea is that Ellen was was like, you know, like Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, et cetera. She has been arrested, but she's under house arrest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in order to, like, try to bypass the Q censors. Uh, because you know her, her normal. They're they're very into comms, right? Like they're big into talking about comms. Yes. And so yes. learn the comms has is, is been uh, repeated in a lot of Q drops. Yeah, and so so her normal her normal comms have been cut, and so she's forced to use alternative comms uh, <laughs> by right. posting a Instagram or whatever video uh, and signaling to her friends that you no, know, in fact, Q has taken her. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was basically it. Uh, yeah, there's this idea that like I don't know they don't believe that the cabal has like a group DM or something where they can communicate yeah. privately. They think that everything has to be open on open social media, but but in this weird code that's that that only they are smart enough to d decipher. Basically, see, this is why they'll never get podcasters because there's there's so many podcasters group DMs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, love, there was like one post where she was wearing a sweatshirt that said run forest run or that's what people claimed she was yeah it, 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 yeah it didn't actually say that it was i forget what it actually said but but yeah they thought they thought it said run forest run and of course this was a signal to tom hanks mm -hmm. to flee because the cabal is on his trail and they're about to catch up with him mm. yeah Amazing. And, and tom's or, son too has been the focus uh chet <laughs> Hanks has been the focus of uh, of some investigation as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. After um, after Tom Hanks was diagnosed with COVID nineteen, Chet Hanks took to Instagram to be be like, "Oh, wow, crazy! My my parents are like have the coronavirus." But when he made the video, he he did it shirtless for some reason, and he happens to have Iconic. just a massive tattoo of the Eye of Providence right on his sternum. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, of course, this this is associated with the Freemasons, which a, which a lot of um, uh, a conspiracy theorists associate with New World o New World Order conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a bad decision on his part. But the, he, he wound up making another video, basically making fun of those conspiracy theorists, talking about how he's going to uh, eat pineal glands and then <laughs> do human sacrifices and stuff. And they took it seriously. It was the, that like really bummed me out because I. <laughs> I mean, you guys know I like to kind of like dabble in some of this stuff for fun. But um, I was like, damn, he has that tattoo. Like, I thought that was crazy. And yeah, then yeah, he posts the one where he's like, obviously making fun, being like, and then we're going to take over the world. And, like, and it's so obviously sarcastic 
and joking. Is he speaking And it's like patois? the cute people took it seriously. It's like, come on, guys. Use the context clues. It's it's because he he speaks in a sort of like uh, facsimile of, of Jamaican patois too, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah. All right, that's all right. Yeah, cool. yeah. He has a he has a he tried a rap career that didn't quite take off. Yeah. Well, what are they making of of uh, the professor, Doctor Donald J. Trump's uh, sort of schizophrenic reaction to uh, to the Corona crisis? You know, has it's like all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's that's a good point. I haven't really seen them try to reconcile that at all. <laughs> I mean, because because they they trust they trust this man like with their life. They really think that he is the source of all truth and goodness and knowledge. And um, they, I mean, this is the reason why a lot of QAnon people were blindsided by the pandemic because Trump, of course, downplayed it as yeah. it start as it started uh, becoming a more and more serious uh, problem here in the United States. Um, um, so. So they they just in fact they also combined the fact that basically Q has been basically silent for like over a month. So while all this crisis is unfolding, they've been flying blind. So they got mixed messages from Trump, which they can't make oh, sense yeah. of. They get they're getting no guidance from Q. So they are left to their own devices to try mm. and spin their own conspiracy theories. Wait, no, I thought Q was was back. A Q, a Q uh, has been back since since, since uh, basically since Eight Coon uh, launched and after Eight Chan. So uh, Q was Eight Q was posting for a few months. Uh, there, the most recent post was just a video, an old video. It wasn't inter- that very interesting. But before that, the last post was about a month ago. It just said God wins. Oh, God right wins. On. Not very informative, mm-hmm. but no no guidance. I mean, wait, sometimes- the last post before this video was a month ago. Yeah, yeah. And 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 forgive me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember Q posting like several times a day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Q sometimes sometimes Q posts um, fifty times in a single day. That has happened. Sometimes Q goes weeks without saying anything. It's very inconsistent. It's not like a it's not like a continuous thing. I wonder just like if the guy behind it just like gets bored or something i mean i mean it's probably changed hands a few times and like i feel like who's ever behind the 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 handle now who uh uh, is not quite as uh, smart and sophisticated as the people who originally ran the q handle Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, i think pretty pretty in the early days of q it was it was obvious that whoever was running it was very very well informed about uh um about every sort of uh, uh conspiracy theory and how they sort of overlapped and connected it was a very sophisticated understanding that that uh that that he was feeding these people, but then over time, the the posts get, started getting more sloppy and weird, mm-hmm. and not not quite as uh, not quite as uh, tight into sort of the conspiracy theory mythology. So uh, so it, there's I feel like there's someone not quite as savvy behind the wheel of Q at the moment. Well, that sort of mirrors the Q movement because at first it was like, you know, I, I mean it, it it just exploded in popularity because I did think it linked a lot of like common threads for people. That like maybe they didn't really follow so well, but there was some familiarity to it. But now Q has its own universe essentially, and that there's so many different like we I think we talked about this uh, last time we had you on. There's just so many different like strands of Q believers now that like it's just all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I mean because there there's a, there's a lot of factionalism with this already pr- uh, fringe community they believe all sorts of wild things i mean we talk about like uh yeah one thing there's a jfk junior lives sect yes uh, mm-hmm. the, who believes that even though q specific, uh, specifically denied it in fact there's a new player on the scene right now there's this Ooh. guy in arizona his name is austin steinbart mm-hmm. and he has been taken to claim oh, that actually i he watched is some q. of his videos yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's so a he's, rising star. Wait, what's he, what's he claiming? He's claiming that he is Q. Specifically, he what? is mm-hmm. yeah, look, is it that he is actually Q from the future who is leaving Q's uh clues from the Q drops 
to his present day self. Basically, he's Q, and then and then and then he is he's built quite a uh, sort of a chunk of the uh, QAnon audience by making these claims. Doesn't he claim to have worked in security before? Yes, yes, he claims he claims that he was uh, it was a department uh, was a defense intelligence agency mm. agent of some sort. He claims that he has previously worked uh, for the CIA in Cuba. He says that his first his first CIA assignment was in Cuba when he was 17 years old. None of this is, is substantiated, oh, of course. I'm looking at this guy right now. He's a young man. Yeah, he's yeah, got he, like a Nick Fuentes vibe. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a well-groomed uh, uh, 29-year-old guy. And um, and f- he started making these these outlandish claims and then and then, yeah, he's uh, he's gotten quite quite popular in certain segments of the QAnon community. Like the other QAnon leaders, the, the basically the old guard hate him because he's 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 making these outlandish claims. Mm, interesting. It, it, yeah, I was about to say, where does Joe M stand on him? Joe M hates him. They they yeah. Respect. Joe M hates hates Austin Steinbart. Uh, those sorts of people. They call him a Johnny Come Lately. They call him <laughs> a, a, a fraud. They they don't like Austin Steinbart. Austin Steinbart at all, but I watched you know. this video about John McCain, and I thought it was like pretty good. I mean, well, I you know, it was it was you know, a lot well, of information. You know, that's the real horseshoe. <laughs> there is that both TrueAnon and QAnon. Well, there's a little bit of overlap there because sometimes they say stuff that's true. But well, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Uh, I mean, but and our hatred of John McCain. Uh, that's a full circle right there. <laughs> One thing that's really great in the video is they really like that. You know, I always loved Trump's attacks on John McCain because it was so. It was always just like, but you were a shitty pilot, and everyone was like, "Oh, heavens to Betsy! I can't believe he's saying that." But it's like, no, John McCain was famously like a terrible fucking pilot. <laughs> He, like, helped destroy an aircraft carrier, which... Yeah, and he, like, graduated respect. last in his class. And, his, mm-hmm. you know, it was basically, like, you know, uh, naval uh, royalty. Dynasty. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, of his yeah. father. He's a total um, fail son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, luckily his daughter... Dude, I hope his daughter joins the Navy. Um Ma- Megan, I'm speaking of. I mean, so, she's sorry. She's at my house right now, so it's like should sink the boat. Ooh, uh, <laughs> classic caddy Liz. Um, I'm cooped so I, up. We mentioned we mentioned uh, a, a, a sort of light side Hollywood actor before, and that's someone named Isaac Cappy. Um, yes, yeah. And I, I mean, that's it's kind of a like pretty sad story, but I think it's really emblematic of a lot of the kind of Q characters who really like throw themselves into that world. And just like how about how the, the, the internet can kind of like really prey on people's basically mental illnesses. Um, and could yeah. you explain, could you explain to our listeners about basically what, what happened? Who was Isaac Cappy? So Isaac Cappy was a, uh, a small time Hollywood actor. He, he had a, uh, he had, um, he had some small roles in a handful of movies. It was one of the Terminator sequels. He was he was in the movie Beer Fest. He was in a couple comedies. He was he was a working actor. He wasn't really a big name. Yeah. But he but he wound up um, basically falling into uh, the the kind of like Pizzagate set where he started making accusations against uh, lots of people. Um, in in Hollywood, uh, claiming that they were engaging in pedophilia without evidence. Uh, one of the people, one of the people that um, that he accused, that Isaac Happy accused, was Seth Green. Um, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he made he made these these. These these accusations on Infowars, for example, Alex Jones loved I- Isaac Cappy, mm. um, um, but um, yeah. So what happens is that he made the, made made these accusations, and then eventually got to a point where uh, he wound up basically uh, um, basically committing suicide um, by throwing himself off of a bridge uh, somewhere in Arizona, and um, and. Uh, that, I mean, why I don't know what exactly motivated him is actually his, his last Instagram post actually referenced the Q, Q community. Yes. So this was a um, very, very uh, tra- tragic incident, but well, that, his, that's basically the story of Isaac Cappy. His last post was that sort of video where he's wearing the denim jacket and, and talking about how he's done some stuff because he was forced to do it. And like, 
it was a very sort of like a, a lot of weird kind of opaque messaging in it um, that was like perfect for these sort of people to leap leap, uh, leap upon and connect to all sorts of their own pet conspiracy theories as well, which is, I mean, that's really one of the thing that like I keep coming back to with the Q and on uh, community because it almost seems like it's just the hub for like you know how like the internet basically became like six websites. Yes, yeah. it's the, like the you know, the conspiracy theory community just became one conspiracy. Yeah, I mean that's that's basically it. It's a sort of a, a synthesis of every conspiracy theory, and they just it just ties together. Um, I mean, you you read I you know, when I read books about um, about uh, about QAnon, basically it's like it's, it's first they start you off like well, okay, let's start off with the sort of like ancient Roman times, and they they sort of like they bring you together. They talk about basically every conspiracy theory that has ever been starting from like I don't know. They they bring you to the Enlightenment era. They talk about the Illuminati, and then they 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 think that there's basically been they basically don't believe in conspiracies they believe in one singular conspiracy throughout all of history and yeah. every sort of every sort of alternative narrative is just part of that one single grand conspiracy the assassin's creed <laughs> that's that's basically it it's, just, it's assassin's creed kind of narrative <laughs> amazing uh, yeah it's it's and uh, we got to wrap up in a sec although uh, not not quite just yet but are are the Q uh, sort of more hardcore, even sort of the, the 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 less hardcore Q followers? Are they are they going outside? Like are they are do they do they? I understand that they 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 think Corona. You know, there's this sort of underlying uh, cause, not cause at least uh, that Corona is basically being used to cover up all these arrests. But uh, are they like? Do they believe that like it exists? No, they think they no they think because Trump finally did take it seriously, they take it seriously too. They take mm. cues uh, directly from Trump uh, again, uh, unless unless like for example, uh, Q uh, Q contradicts them. So Q hasn't provided any guidance on the pandemic, and then Trump said that the pandemic is serious. So Q on people have been taking it taking it seriously, but they but they also believe that it's ultimately part of the plan. I don't know how they're going to keep reconciling <laughs> this as things. Are going to get even more serious in the coming weeks and months, but um, but uh, th no, they 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 do think it's real. Yeah, Has anyone I like prominent in the Q community contracted uh, COVID nineteen? No, not not yet, not yet. So I'm that's going to be really wild. That is going to be wild. It was uh, when we're like, yeah, so if like fucking Joe M comes out, uh, confesses that he caught the caught the caught the Rona, uh, that'll be interesting. Dude, but no, I would not love yet. to intubate Joe M. I mean, <laughs> I, I actually do feel. I mean, he's a, all these people are really. I mean, obviously grifters or at least preying upon other people's gullibility or mental illness, but like. I just he is my rock in the Q community. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he is he is obviously a lot smarter than the rest of them. He he writes in complete sentences yes. which is which is which is uh elevates him uh, above the rest. He's I mean, he's a true believer. I mean, Julian, my co-host on uh the QAnon Anonymous podcast, he's pretty convinced that Joe M is CIA. I have no reason to believe that. Ooh, I, I like that. Yeah, but uh, but uh, I, I I'm really convinced that um, that he is a just a true believer. I think he's. Um, I also think that he, I I also don't think he's American. I think that he is actually South African for um, hmm. for a couple reasons. He's South uh, African. Can you tell me the reasons? Uh, well, yeah, because basically. Um, Basically, uh, his 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 original name I forget what it was, but his original name uh, uh, is a basically a, a South African phrase that that mm. translates to, uh, to your mother's cunt. Basically, this was orig <laughs> his his original screen name, uh, which which is a common vulgarity, I guess I guess in South Africa, and uh, basically that that's that's the main reason why why would a, mm. uh, a an American reference a South African vulgarity? Yeah, that's not an American thing. Yeah, interesting. Um, well, that would make I, sense with intelligence stuff too. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, because you know that my my personal theory uh, has always been that Q and Pizzagate stuff, whether they originally started out as like ops, I do think that like it's. I mean, my my like weird theory that I don't have a ton of evidence for, except for some circumstantial stuff, is that Roger Stone basically concocted it with like Posobiec and Cernovich and a couple other people. Um, 
to basically def- either at first the pizza gate stuff to like smear or whatever podesta which by the way don't need i mean don't get me started on that we'll do a deep dive someday on whether some of the podesta stuff but like um but that eventually the QAnon and Pizzagate sort of merging there was them essentially trying to make the idea that there was a global pedophile cabal, uh, just totally the realm of, of wackos and not actually like really true and happening. So, um, because now if, you know, if, if you, if I, if I start talking to people about, you know, child sex slave islands and the Clintons and blah, 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 they're like, Oh, this is QAnon stuff. But like, no, that's, Real, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is something I I, I, I think we, we uh, I talk about a lot on the show. Yeah, is that it's like yeah, it is frustrating that that QAnon because they they add on all these this bizarre uh, fascistic fantasy baggage onto yeah. something that is real and and and, and, and horrifying and uh, a, a problem. I mean, yeah. I mean, like uh, like yeah, like the, the Epstein stuff is super villain unimaginably yeah. awful um and like it doesn't need all of the weird embellishments that they sort of tag on to it to make it uh less credible than uh, than uh, you know than it ought to be if you're talking about the real stuff you know? i mean i i do think it's crazy that hillary clinton uh had her brother tony rodham killed and <laughs> put in epstein's cell i think that's fucking crazy but it's like there's a good reason she did that right like it's not like she just did it because she's evil I mean, I am of the mind that, like, the birther stuff generated, like, that came from Roger Stone, and he's the one who fed it to Trump, like, a billion years ago. Like, well, that's, yeah. like, kind of my, yeah. like, and, and then that, that kind of plays into the, my theories about warring factions and in different intelligence communities. Yankees and cowboys, baby. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, we got we got to wrap up, Liz. Do you got any you got any uh, burning questions here? No, I just you know I suggest all our listeners. You're bored at home. Check out what the celebs are doing. They're acting up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no celebs are going. Also, Matthew McConaughey. He wrote, he he tweeted that sort of cryptic picture of the witness room. Oh yeah, they they really no. like latched onto that. Yeah. One. I wonder yeah, if they that, love that has too. to do with a true detective, possibly like a new true detective happening. Yeah, I have, I can't make sense of that either. But yeah, that they did interpret that to me and like oh, like oh, all all of us Hollywood uh, uh, sickos are confessing to yeah. like Q team basically. Yeah, well, because Matthew McConaughey has also done other very weird social media posts, and it's like I don't know. I kind of like get it because I'm like watching all these things and I'm like. Okay, yeah. this is weird. Like, it's it's legitimately, Listen. like, what Madonna is doing is legitimately weird, yes. even for Madonna. It's weird. But fuck it, because celebrities are just drama geeks who got way more attention than they, than they should know. be getting. So, of course, and there's they no one to manage them anymore because they're just at home with the internet yeah. and they could do whatever they want. And they've got terrible taste. That's the and real secret of Hollywood. All- all of us Jews, all the, all my me and my 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 people, we're all germaphobes, and so all their managers can't get out, and we 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 can't control them. I'm sorry, we can't control them. We've let this society go mad because we're afraid of getting COVID nineteen. Um, but well, thank you so much for joining us. I I tell you, if you like if you like listening about about QAnon, listen to. Travis's podcast, QAnon Anonymous, because I'm a I'm a longtime listener. Fantastic show. I mm-hmm. cannot personally get enough of QAnon shit. So, yeah, big, thank uh, you. Big fan if you, there. If you want to like uh, go down the rabbit hole without having to read all your posts yourself, yeah, just uh, yeah, just type in QAnon Anonymous into your podcasting app, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a good time. Awesome. Anything else you wanna you wanna you wanna boost? That, that's it. I mean, it was like uh, we're also on the show. We also have uh, we also we just started a, a Twitch uh, stream. We, we're, we're doing it twice a week. It's a lot of fun too. We do a lot of uh, stories from another one of our co-hosts. His name is Jake. He's sort of our uh, storyteller of the group, and we sort of talk about. We basically we, we take these these Q and on narratives and we try to make them, I guess, a little bit more entertaining. We add music. It's a lot of fun. Uh, when, what time do you guys do those? 
Uh, we do those uh, every Monday, usually at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern, but the time uh, will change. Check out the QAnon Anonymous Twitter account for, for any updates on that. Yeah, we just started doing those, too. They're fun. I like, I like the little Twitch guy. Yeah, it's good. Um, well, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Yeah, wonderful. All right. We will see you next time in the COVID zone. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye-bye. 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 B